pleasure to meet you and, and have a chance to talk with you. I'm glad to have you on the show. Thank you for having me on, on the show. Well, let me start out before uh, anything else. I'm a huge fan, man. I, I, yeah. I've been a fan of the band since uh, 1999, and uh, it's a thrill to have you on. Thanks a lot. So, 1999, so that means 25 years. No, no, it seemed like seemed like yesterday, huh? Uh, yeah, it's it's really if you think about it and how how the time flies, it's it's really hard. So, it is. It definitely is. Best best is not think about it. That's right. You know? That's right. Just let it go. Huh? Just let it go because you have you have no choice anyway. That's right. And then you got to enjoy it as much as you yeah, can. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I try. At least I try. That's right. That's right. You got to do your best. Yeah. I want to start out. Uh, obviously, the new album uh, hits off, uh, April 19th. And uh, I'll tell you what, I got to listen through a few times. Fantastic record. Um, you know, what I wanted to ask you to start out, uh, you know, with six tracks on this album, you know, it's... Uh, you know, with all the other albums, you know, obviously Vine and Plus that I listen to, uh, it's a listening journey for me. You know, it's an experience, I think, you know, when you start to the finish, um, you know, with songs like obviously you guys released uh, My Icarian Flight. And, and my favorite on this album is is Sancta, Sanctimon, let me say it right, <laughs> Sanctimonarium. <laughs> I, I, I don't even say it because I, I mess it up, I think. <laughs> But uh, what I wanted to ask you is, is on this album, take us through the the uh, the journey of this album, you know, when you guys started it to record. Take us through this journey from your eyes, from your uh, perspective. Well, it's, it's always, the way we work is uh, always, since maybe 10, 12 years, it's like uh, we, we do a good pre-production which uh, which uh, Stefan does on the, the um, laptop and uh, with his tools. And so he has uh, his ideas um, for everybody. Of course, he has a main composition uh, and um, he has his ideas for the instruments. And um, of course, it's I mean, he has good ideas because we know each other uh, since very long time uh, for drums. So and, uh, for me, Personally, it's like uh, uh, I take what's what's good and try to make better what I think I have a better idea. Right. And so uh, right. everybody gets his uh, pre-production and uh, Andy works on his lyrics, Thorsten bring in the bass and this time it's uh, Alessandro at uh, the keyboards. And um, uh, so uh, then everybody get prepared and um, uh, for me, it's very important that I, because I have to start the whole thing, uh, right. that that I, you know, I, I can't um, mess it up in a way that at, at the end, uh, somebody comes up with, uh, hey, you can't play uh, triplets on this spot because I play 16s with my guitar, it doesn't fit, whatever. Right. And so um, uh, I, I go uh, uh, one at least one day uh, at the studio with Stefan, just Stefan and me, and we uh, go through the stuff. And I, um, uh, it's like, uh, um, you know, I, I play it in a rough way, how I think it's good. And so we work on it. Right. And so then Stefan can leave and we have a rough recording and I, then I start to play it in a clean way. And, um, and then step by step, Torsten brings in the bass, the keyboards come in at, guitars uh, and at the end uh, the singer i think that's a regular right. way yeah. right but that's how we work on it that's great to to hear how you put these you know albums together because you know like i said after listening to you guys for so long it's uh it's it, it just amazes me you know the amount of, of variances in these yeah. records i mean how tight the songs are and how it's 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 massive to be yeah. able to put that together I think it's um, uh, that's a part of Fun Plus which I like really. Uh, if if you start listening to it, I think it's a lot of stuff. I mean, there there, there are many many bands which which uh, have more stuff in songs, especially if you talk about progressive uh, music. Uh, right. um, but I think um, you can 
um, find some new stuff um, in in the in the song when you listen to it uh, the third or fourth time. So it's not you know it's just a song and that's it. Like maybe uh, bands worked in the um, in the eighties. It's a song and you listen to it and, and you you know it by ninety five percent. And I think if you listen to that kind of music with, with the first try to listen to you, you you know a song which is very complex by maybe 50 or 60 percent and that makes it interesting because right. you you can uh, explore a song that's right it gives you it gives you so much more as a listener you know yeah. the first time you listen and then be able to listen through five or six times and really yeah. like i said like the perfect way to put it is is it's an experience yeah. And I like to be able to listen to music that way because it's uh, it's not the same old hey straight straight straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the same feeling with with good films. If I, you know, some right. uh, movies you listen, you you look the, at the movie one time and yeah, and you don't want to um, spend the time to um, uh, look have a look at that movie again. But there are some movies, uh, they come up at night. You know, I want to go to bed, yeah. and there is uh, Fight Club, for example. Right, oh, right. Fight, Fight Club. Let's look. Uh, let's uh, have a look at Fight Club again. And and I have right. it on DVD, so uh, I can have a look uh, on it um, whenever I want, you know. But uh, if it's uh, on the TV, right. I, I sit down and have uh, again Fight Club, and it never, it's, it's never boring for me. It is kind of films. Right. Or oh, The Godfather, right. you know, The Godfather, Marlon Brando, Robert De Niro. Great uh, movie. Yeah, that's the same thing with good movies. If they are directed well, well actors. You can uh, have, um, you can, um, otherwise, it, you know, it's, um, uh, it doesn't make sense, you know, but there you find out it's a good movie if you want to see it again. That's right. That's right. If you keep listening, keep watching, that's a, yeah, that's a great way to put it too, because that's, that's really, you know, that, that's a perfect way to define, mm -hmm. you know, what you guys do. And I, I think that's, that, that says a lot about the band after this many years to, yeah, yeah, to be I, able to bring that. In the beginning, the, so uh, as uh, as you uh, if you listen to the starts, the first CD, Color Temple. Uh, so that at that time, you know, we we've been uh, um, just a, a band around it in Kaiserslautern, our hometown, and so we we started playing. Uh, I, I talked to Andy uh, last week about that because we started uh, playing under that name, Van Plus, in uh, eighty four. So. Right. That's when we started to play, and we never covered. We've ne never been a cover band. Of course, we've had, you know, at that time you sh you have had to play jump from Van Halen. Um, right, right. So, but right. but we have maybe have, we have had two or three uh, cover songs, but we always went on our original material. And then we played for a few years, and we played new songs, and we uh, uh, put uh, 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 the songs away, in new songs, and whatever. And then when we recorded Color Temple, um, we, we said, okay, let's do the best songs which we have now. And that songs, we were rehearsing all the time, you know, that songs, we were playing them live. And, and then step by step, it went in a, in a different direction because um, we, uh, we started to, um, to have uh, these pre-productions on, on the computer. Right. Not, not not from now till tomorrow, but step by step. And now we do it completely like pre-production. And then uh, for me, that one or two days in the studio is very important for Stefan me to find out how uh, that work, that song really works. Right. Um, uh, because we, did, we never rehearsed that like that we did with Color Temple uh, uh, 40 years ago, you know. Right, so we right. rehearsed it, we played it live. So Van Halen, that was the same thing with Van Halen. Van Halen 1 is maybe really, maybe the best CD they ever, or, or long players they ever did, did because they were playing okay. that songs all the time uh, at their live shows. Right. And, um, and that, then you see uh, uh, 84, which is a great album for me from Van Halen. That Agreed. maybe what's that uh, uh, kind of of working on the uh, uh, on the songs was the same for them because just Alex and Edward were on the on the studio working on the songs. Of course, with, with right. a lot of more time uh, because they had their own studio. But it, times changes a band and how you work. Right. Right. 
Yeah, that's so that's so interesting, you know, to to see how things have changed, you know, from yeah. back then with all the guys going into the studio and you know yeah. cutting the album with everybody, and now all the yeah. pieces are different. You send things over over the internet, and yeah, it's a different yeah, yeah. style of writing for sure. Absolutely, the time changes and uh, it's it's it makes things easier for for everybody. Uh, I think right. maybe there are a lot of bands. Uh, uh, which which still work in the traditional way, but it's also a, a question of money. You know, if you are Metallica, you 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 don't have one note written music, and you go to a studio and sit together and say, "Let's start, let's start." What what kind of idea do you have to this riff? And so they have right. months. They right. they don't care about money. So, but but uh, bands, I think most of the bands can't do it that way because it's it's, it's a question of money right right and, and time of, of course time exactly exactly you know you mentioned earlier about uh alessandro coming in uh, to play keys in this which i i've had him on the show and, and i think he's fantastic and everything that he does i thought he was a great fit coming in with <laughs> you guys what what was the transition like bringing alessandro in because he he brings you know different elements yeah, to, to this music as well. Let us know about that. Tell us about that. That was so easy. It was really like you, you can't imagine how easy it was because he, he completely fit in with his kind of uh, with the way he plays keyboards and he exactly knew what um, what we uh, what we expect. And right. uh, I, I mean, I find out later uh, this guy is very uh, famous, you know, Right, right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. He's more famous than we are. So, uh, uh, but it was our uh, first choice, you know. We, when, um, also, when when uh, I, I went back in time, by thinking when uh, I mean we've been together. I think Günther came in the band at um, eighty nine. So, right. and uh, Thorsten at ninety. So we we played together with this uh, lineup uh, since nineteen ninety. Uh, so that's very long. Now, I was still joking. It's it's just CC Top and Fun Plus which have the same same lineup that long, and then right. uh, that's right. Then Dusty Hill, uh, <laughs> the bass player from CC Top, uh, tragic, tragically, tragically, yep, tragically died, and because I like CC Top very much. And, Great band, um, uh, yeah, and, and he died, and I said, "So it's just fun plus, you know." And then uh, uh, Günther told us uh, once, "Ah, he, I mean, we we saw that coming because um, he was not that, that glad in the last two years, you know, to, yeah. if he did stuff with the band, and he, I think he he was not, um, he doesn't saw himself still in that rock and roll stuff thing you know he likes right. more to have orchestral with rock music this kind right. of stuff and um so um i mean we have had a good time and so um it's, you have to uh, let somebody go and uh, um uh, when that happened uh, before 99 we always tried to not think oh okay well, what's what should we do now without that guy whatever uh, guitar player, bass player, whatever left. And uh, uh, we said, okay, let's have a look uh, um, to people which are above us, you know. Right. Right. Don't, don't, and, and this is also easy. If, you, if that happened maybe 15 years ago, you, you would have, have a look, hey, we have a, a, a keyboard player around our area, you know. And, and, and I mean, right. Alessandro, he, he lives six, I think it's 600 kilometers, which is not that far, but it's still a long ride or a flight. And he showed up uh, um, for the video um, shot uh, by car because he said it's till I, when I have to go to the airport and then fly and wait till the flight is uh, 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 taking off. And I have to go from Frankfurt to Kaiserslautern. It takes me longer than I go to the car and drive straight through. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. But but it's I, it's a long ride and right. uh, it, but it makes uh, it's so easy to work together because of the internet and fifteen or twenty years ago that wouldn't be possible to work like that right. And, right. and all the bands does it like that 
Um, we, we played with Metal Church once, I think in Atlanta, uh, um, uh, Power. And, and uh, we talked to that guys after the show and they, they are uh, they from everywhere uh, over right, the States, right, you know. Right, they, right. They, they just meet at the gigs. And that's, that's um, you know, it's these, these times when you just, you, you, that's how we started. Uh, like like uh, a bunch of guys from that K town area, you know, right. um, and um, but but time changes uh, the situation. That's right. That's right. Do you find it? You know, we talk about the you know the recording process, you know that that you guys go through. Do you find it easier now to record an album, or or did you kind of like that, or did you like a mix of both? Well, um, for, like I like that mixable stuff. For me, Stefan is the most important guy because I, I put everything on the guitar riffs. You know, that's when, right. when I play with one plus, I, I just go with the guitars. So, okay, of course, on some spots you have a bass line which you, which you find out, okay, the bass line is very important there and whatever, or the keyboards. But right. the main, main part is for me is uh, where's the guitar, what's the guitar doing? Um, and um, I, I like it um, to have that two days with Stefan, where, where we really go to the songs. And um, of course, Alessandro, he's a producer by his own, you know, and right. uh, he, right. he works with so many bands and he knows exactly what to do. And if there's, if, if there's uh, um, some minor spots, you say, ah, maybe another sound on that spot, you write an email, you know. And he right. brings right. Up, brings up another sound. And says, yeah, okay, not, that's it. You know, it's easy. And right. uh, yeah, the the work we did, I liked it. I have to admit that I uh, liked it very much to to be in the um, in, in the rehearsal room and sit together and have a talk and let's try and uh, record with with this very simple stuff. But it's enough uh, for listening how comes the song out. If I play that, I like it. But I'm not alone. Uh, right. um, right. with that decision, you know, and, um, I'm, I, and I'm still, um, I think I, I'm the guy in the band which loves the most playing live in every uh, yeah. way. I, when we stop that um, video later, I have a rehearsal with, with, totally, with a keyboard player, which is phenomenal, uh, with total, uh, it's totally different music, like Fun Plus, right. but right. Yeah, uh, I, I play, or, or, there's a blues session around the corner, you know, uh, they give me a call, I mean, you need a drummer for the blues session. And, you know, okay, and blues is not my favorite music, but I, I like to explore new stuff. And right. that's uh, uh, also a way uh, uh, why I like that uh, band work, you know, in the, in the rehearsal room. Right. And also the rehearsal room is at my house, so it makes, uh, that makes it easier. <laughs> it makes it easy for me, you know. I can right. uh, stay uh, in, in the kitchen with a... a Cut a, a, a cup of coffee and wait. Uh, where's where this guy? Oh, he's late. Okay, another coffee. You know, right, and, right. Uh, so it's easy for me. So for, yeah. if you are a drummer, you need a rehearsal room because you, if, if, right. as a guitar player, you um, uh, you can play with just headphones. But if you are a drummer, you need a, a room where you can practice. Or uh, uh, behind me, as, so I have a um, that's kind of a bureau. I have a yeah, that's nice. ele electronical drum. It's it's not a special great thing, but if I if I have to uh, practice something very quick, you know, I just turn round headphones on. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah, the show tonight. Uh, yeah, you have to f figure out two or three spots where, where you right. have to right. how it works. So, uh, I have an electronic uh, kit here, but uh, I like uh, as a drummer. I, I think if you ask a drummer, every drummer would say, "No, no, you have to play on a acoustical drum set, a real drum set, real cymbals, real drums." Right, right. Electronical drums, they are yeah, it's good for that uh, kind of stuff where you have to do something as real quick, or or you live in an apartment in a, in a flat where you can't play. Loud drum set is okay, but every drummer wants to play a real drum set if right. it's possible, and right. that's that's really a luxury for me having uh, that uh, that house with that rehearsal room where I can play every time. No, nobody of the um, of the neighbors never uh, complained, so that's really a luxury for me. And you don't have to keep tearing your set down, moving it, and making yeah. a change. It's nice to have it. I could imagine that. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> Yeah, if, if, 
if you are a drummer, if you get older, the bass drums always come uh, smaller, you know. You always right. play sm uh, s smaller kits, smaller bass drums. But I, uh, yeah, I, I started to to blow up my, uh, not blow up, to, to expand my uh, drum set in the last years. You know, I, it was right, like right. Two, okay, I want to have two bass drums again. Man, I need a gong tom. Then if I, uh, yeah, gong tom's cool. And um, so I played a few times just to make, bring some sense in it that I have another right. big drum and I have to play it. And then if I see pictures, I say, nah, it's just a gong tom on that side. I need one more on that side, you know. You gotta balance it out, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, of course, if we, if we go on tour, we have plans for 25. You, you have you have guys, uh, roadies, which help you, but still it's a lot of work, you know. And uh, yeah, that is, yeah. well, I but can imagine. You, ne next life, I, I become a bass player, you know. It's it. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, we, play, we played with uh, Pink Cream 69. Yes, I don't know if you know. Great him. band. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I know those guys very well. And Dennis Ward, the bass player, he was um, uh, he was recording uh, Far of Grace at the House of Audio Studios. And we played a show in, uh, I think, in Budapest together. Okay. With, with them, and and he came out of the of the bu the tour bus. We have uh, rented a nightliner because a long long ride, and he came out of the bus with with his bass guitar and and the cable, but no no case no soft case the, the naked bass and the cable. And I said, where, where do you have your equipment? The rest, your you know, amp and whatever, and, or replacement bass. And I said, nah, I I don't. And that you know that that's twenty five years ago. Right, and, right. And he said, "I go with my uh, cable in the in the mixing board, and he gives me the bass on the monitor system, and that's it. And I don't have a replacement bass because if something happens, I ask your bass player to to give me his replacement bass, and he will do it, of course. Right. Uh, um, and and so it's easy life, you know, bass player. And, and I said, yeah, that's great. And I have four bass drums, you know, it's by two bass drums and two gong right, right. bass drums." <laughs> <laughs> He is a uh, he's an amazing uh, not only musician but producer too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The things that he's done, I had him on the show I think in twenty sixteen. Yeah. Um, he was doing the uh, the one with Michael Kiske. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I'm trying to place. I, I don't even know. I, I I'm guessing I say this right. Place Vendome. Yeah, yeah. Place Vendome. That's it's how a, I I would say it like that too. Yeah, he's uh. He's amazing, and that band's amazing too. Really are. Yeah, yeah, uh, and I like that sound. He, um, I, we've been just. I've been there another time for another project where I played drums for, and I like the the drums are really raw. You know, he he likes it really raw, and yeah. uh, not not overdone. You know, uh, um, uh, um, and I, I like the tr the raw drum sound of that production very much. Yeah, he does a great job. You know, we talked yeah. about uh. You know, uh, let me I'll, I'll, the the press release yeah. when it came out. You know, and I, I read through them obviously. And there's a line in there that says, "The band has a legacy of pushing musical boundaries," and and that's what I wanted to lead into because I think that's a great way to explain what you guys do because it's never the same. It's it, it's always a great listen and, and like I said, an experience. Tell us about that. I mean, if you could even explain how you guys push the boundaries. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean that's hard to explain because you just do what right, you right, do. Right. Uh, um, but um, you try to to um, define yourself again new, uh, like maybe a director or an actor. It, it doesn't make sense to make the same movie again. So maybe that's also uh, um, why I don't like if you know um you know the movie ben hua with charlton Hess, yes which is right. very uh, yeah and i said right and i said uh, you you can't you can't make that again because it was so great and uh, uh you, you you shouldn't do that you know to make another movie right. because you can't you can't do it that way with charlton heston that guy you know just right. the presence of the guy and then they did they did two new Ben who were movies which sucked totally both right you know? they, they never matched up that's right yeah yeah and and so why didn't they listen to me because i said <laughs> that's right. can't do it, but ne <laughs> nobody asks me 
<laughs> then, and that's uh, if if you are an actor or a director, and of course, there's a new generation which want to bring out their own Ben Hur, but sometimes you can't do it better. And uh, so, as a band, you 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 want to do something different, some, something new. Otherwise, you're just you know it's the same, it's the same. And um, Stefan has so many ideas of uh, for new songs, you know, and and everybody is uh, pushing his uh, own abilities uh, forward, uh, playing his instrument, and uh, right. so um, so you grow, you grow as uh, or should grow as each uh, individual musician, and uh, you should grow by that as a band and as uh, um, composers. Uh, okay. And um, uh, it 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 doesn't get boring for yourself because you um, you find new stuff in your own playing, uh, which makes it again more interesting for yourself. And it should be like that because it's if it starts get boring for yourself, you know, like oh, okay, again the new beat, uh, the old beat, you know, I want to do something different. But you still have to do it uh, different in a way that everybody says it's, it's a kind of signature um, uh, um, beat or riff, you know. Right. So Standard. I, 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 I mean, I come up with Van Halen again, but uh, that, that's a band who influenced me, you know, Van Halen, uh, uh, Journey, uh, the, the um, early Journey, where Steve Smith was playing band, uh, CC Top, Beatles, of course, Beatles. Right. Um, and uh, if, if you, uh, if you heard Alex von Halen playing drums, I mean, he, he never played something. Uh, uh, he never played in another band. He just played von Halen. But he, that drum sound, if you didn't know it, that, that drum sound, you said that's von Halen. That's a drum sound of von Halen. That's right. That's right. And you have you have to get there somehow, and that's so hard, you know, uh, right. because every drums set sounds for ninety five percent. Uh, uh, same, you know, but that's right. there's one drummer, that's Alex Van Halen, and of course Bonham, but that was a time, you know, you have a 26 inch bass drum, which big sound and uh, it's a different kind of music, but Alex Van Halen, right. I, I never heard that. And same thing with um, Edward Van Halen. I still remember uh, sitting in a bar uh, uh, or a club, uh, having beer with my friends and that uh, uh, Beat It from Michael Jackson came out. Right. And, I, I, I mean, I knew Michael Jackson, you knew that, uh, but I, I never heard that song. I heard it first time there in the club. And I said, what's that? That's Michael Jackson. But this guitar player, it's Eddie Van Halen. And I, of course, I didn't, obviously, I didn't know it, that he played that song for, for Michael Jackson. Right, uh, but right. You no, know, that, that takes two seconds, two seconds, and you, you can say, that's Alex Van Halen. And that is really something you know because right. also with guitar sounds it's it's hard to define your own unique guitar sound and there is one hand for me benchmark it's I, I don't know anybody else but i can say from the spot that's one hand drums or guitar and yeah that's right yeah. that's right you know it's funny you brought up van halen and and uh, i oh. love van halen as well excuse me excuse me oh no problem no problem i uh I wanted to check that before, and now totally amateur, I didn't. So no, <laughs> I've had that happen before too, Andreas. But maybe you, you never know yeah. when it comes up. Yeah, I call you back. <laughs> <laughs> but you you brought up Van Halen, and it, it's yeah. funny that um, next week I'm doing a live show about Van Halen. You know, we're going to have some special guests on. It's just like a I like to do tribute shows, uh -huh. and, and and you know, you brought up that you know that piece with with. Uh, when, when Michael Jackson brought Beat It out. Yeah. And, and you know, it was funny. I felt the same way. Yeah. You know, when I heard that playing, I said, that's Eddie. Yeah. But I didn't know. And then you yeah. go back. But they they brought that sound, like you said, is so distinct. And it's iconic. Yeah. It, it, it's it's something that lasts forever. And, and, and I totally get what you're saying, that you want to reach that point as an artist. Yeah. That, that's really legacy, you know. Right? And and uh, I mean Jennifer Batten, uh, she's a great guitar player, right. and she played it great. But Eddie played it greater. <laughs> I mean, right. it's hard to it's, it's hard to say because it was it was his uh, um, signature sound, and it's hard even for such a great guitar player like uh, Jennifer Batten to replace that sound. 
or to re, uh, redo it, it's hard because there's so much um, work in it to, to bring that sound up. And that's the fingers. It's, it's not that you can, it, it's the same with Angus Young. You can go right. up on stage and take Angus's guitar and play Highway to Hell with the same gear, same guitar, same stage, same venue. You, you won't sound like Angus. That, that's right. that is, is his fingers. It's his kind of playing. And that's, that's so much work in it. Um, I re really admire this kind of stuff. And also Michael Anthony, the bass player. For him. He, he did exactly what a bass player has to do in Van Halen. Uh, that was 100% the right bass player for Van Halen and his, 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 the, the voice, the high voices he uh, right. uh, was singing great, great, great singer. I really, uh, I love the Van Halen stuff with David Lee was, I have to admit, uh, I'm totally a fan. Huge, I mean, great performers too, all the way around. And it, it's, uh, it's one of those things that it just, it just comes together like once in a lifetime. And, and it's like the perfect meeting. And I yeah. thought one thing that they did well, too, was, you know, even when they brought Sammy in, I mean, you can't even think of a band where they changed an iconic lead singer yeah. and then brought in another guy who was huge and yeah. that made it just as good. Yeah. But they, uh, uh, but what, what, I, I like that, too. Of course, I like that, too, because they were doing great stuff. With Sammy too, but I, I I'm totally I'm an old school guy, yeah. I'm with and you. I, <laughs> yeah, and I, I, they they knew each other very well because I I was I was reading the Van Halen biography, and they've been on tour with um, uh, a tour package uh, um, Montrose where Sammy Hagar was singing. Montrose right. was a guitar player right. with his own band, and and um, Steve Smith from Journey later's journey because that right. was i think if i um, uh, have it in my mind right kind of 78 and uh, steve smith was playing drums for montrose that right. was montrose van halen journey and so uh, two years later uh, ansley dunbar left journey and that guy said oh remember that great drummer from montrose steve smith give him a call you know right. and uh, and uh, um, Sammy Hagar was singer for Montrose. And right. uh, six years later, they said, ah, the singer from Montrose was great. And, and also, right. <laughs> and, and, and uh, uh, Billy Sheehan, which is uh, playing with uh, Mr. Big now, and was Amazing. playing the David Lee Roth band, right. which was the best band ever at that time, 86. I, I saw Van Halen in 84, Monsters of Rock here. And that was, I think the, the split was already uh, decided. Uh, but right. they had have, they have had that contracts to play that show and they were not good and right. uh, ACDC was uh, headlining and they were really great in Van Halen I, I saw them once and they were not good but then I saw the David Lee Roth band uh, a few years later with Greg Bissonette oh, he's a great drummer Billy Sheehan Steve Vai and right. Brad Tuttle on keyboards I think he was never really on stage but he played he was that was the best right. band at the time and, yep. and and uh, Billy Sheehan was playing with uh, his own band Taylors. Dallas, yeah, oh yeah. A few years, a, a few years earlier, they were on tour as support act for Van Halen, and that's where David Lee Ross remembered. Oh, I, I need, I need the band. There was a great bass player from Taylors. Let's give him a call, and that's how you find together. And, that's amazing. Um, yeah, uh, I, I like that. I like that stories. How, that is, how, that's a uh, great story. Yeah, that's a great story. I did get to see you know Dave's band too, um, and I I have the picture of here in Pittsburgh when he was coming in on a surfboard <laughs> yeah. to start the whole thing up, and you know we were I think we were in like the third or fourth row too, so we were close, yeah. but yeah I mean amazing performer, Absolutely. he just unreal. I, I think a, a lot of people got David Lee Ross wrong, you know, because he was of course he was a, a talker, you know, and. Uh, and, uh, kind kind of I'm the greatest you know and same thing with Muhammad Ali the boxer you know he That's was right. always I'm the greatest and that was just for the show that was everything was just for the show right, right. Uh, and and uh, it's for David, David Lee Roth it's the same thing that he he knew um, 
uh, people want to see something, you know, that they want to see somebody, in, of course, uh, somebody performing. And uh, they pay money for, for stuff happening. And uh, right. of, of course, you, you polarize uh, and some um, people don't like it. And so they don't like you. And they maybe would like your singing voice and your band if you act different. But that's the way he is. And he was in the, I mean, that was at that time, I think I, so from time to time, it's the same thing. The um, 83 US show, uh, US Fest, right. I think it was uh, the US thing, what we have here, Monsters right. of Rock. Right. They were so good. And they were. I, and I think he, he was drunk too, but he was right. so funny, you know. But it That's was right. okay, or, or he acted being drunk. But if he can act like being drunk that good, he should be a great actor. That's right. But, <laughs> but, That's right. But it, because I think it's a, it's one of the hardest things I, I heard. It it's one of the hardest thing for an actor to act a drunken guy uh, because it's really hard to to uh, to right. do that and. Uh, uh, I think he was really drunk, <laughs> drugs were, but it was it was so entertaining. It was so entertaining. That's and right. That was, yeah. yeah, I mean, you need to, you know, when you have a guy, you know, that, that could do that, he, like I said, the whole band just got tied together so perfectly. You had the showman, you had the great yeah. guitar player, then you had the incredible rhythm section yeah, yeah, yeah. to put together. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, and I yeah. kind of think that, you know, talking about that, you guys have it too. You have that, you know, with, with you and Andy, yeah. and obviously, you know, what, what, working with Andy for that amount of time, you know, and being able to to bring, you know, these new albums. What's it like working with him? Because I think he's an amazing vocalist, but it yeah. has to give you guys that sense of, wow, we can do something a little bit different here, and he can handle it. Um, and I, Andy, he's really professional uh, in the way he works on his lyrics and the way he sings you know and and also when we play uh, theater shows and you have that actors singers whatever and Andy's also an actor and singer and I, I have my headphones on you know on, on stage and I, I listen to to the singer sound check or whatever I never heard a wrong note from Andy never it's amazing uh, so um he's he's really um he worked really hard for that and um uh, it's it's andy is the best colleague uh, as a bandmate so he's really a guy you know uh, if uh, you know that stories about singer is they, they come with a little case where the microphone is in and they come late and that's it right. that's what they do <laughs> like where, where's my mic where's my mic stand no, no but he, he he really he really helps uh, carrying stuff and we we've been here together uh, two days ago uh andy and me were in a bar to, the night before <laughs> and had a good time and next time nice. St stefan andy and me uh, uh we've been here for um um uh, having a look at our um, re uh, rehearsal room you know to put all this old stuff out you know to, because there's so many stuff we don't need you have martial boxes whatever you know and and rec right. elements uh, uh what you don't necessarily let let's have a look at it because it just takes space and give it to some you know to to uh, uh some kids which want to start playing a band and they are, they are glad if, if, if they get a mixing desk or uh, right. some rec elements, uh, echoes, whatever. And, and do, if the Marshall box, uh, um, let's, let's do an auction and we, we, we give the money which we get for that box, which we took, uh, Stefan took it all over Europe, the Dream Theater too, or whatever for, for uh, 30 years. It, it looks really rock and roll, you know? Right, and, right. Uh, and 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 what you get for that money, we spend it for uh, um, um, charity or whatever. So it's that's really you don't great. Don't want to make money. You don't want to make money. It, it's just you know, give it somebody, and uh, right. because it just takes space. So we've been here, and then he's really a great guy. If if we if we load uh, um, have load in or load out, so Andy is really helping. Or uh, I always have that one story uh, because Andy and me we live close together right we we, we uh, live in uh, k-town Kaiserslautern center and uh, it's maybe 
one kilometer from me where he lives. Right, right. And so I, I was at night. I have to my, my my lawn washing machine was broken, and I you have to put it on the street, you know, because um, the trash company picks it up early in the morning. Yeah. Right, right. You know, it's, right. It's, too, it's too too uh, too stock, so I have to carry it. And it's very heavy. Right. So I said uh, at night, at you know, uh, um, eleven p.m. I, I said, oh shit, I forgot the lawn wash. And, uh, who who can I call? No, no. Andy, can you come over and uh, give me a hand with the lawn wash? And you know, they said I'm five minutes. I'm here. You know, that's great. You know, that's and that's uh, uh, other people wouldn't take the phone. You know, <laughs> at eleven p.m. Right, right. Yeah? But five right. minutes later, it was here carrying stuff. And that's, that's great. So, that's how. Um, and uh, it's like talking about um, uh, the. Uh, having a look look at the rehearsal room, it's a, it's the same thing when when you have when you have a band you have a band but also you run a brand you run a company, That's you right. know where, where you have extra work. We, let's have a look at the merchandise and the uh, the shop uh, uh, web shop whatever and uh, new new carpet in the rehearsal room. It's always Stefan Andy and me since because we have been you know to to run that company. We've been together since uh, I can, Stefan came in the band '86, I think. Right. So, uh, and that's Amazing. everybody just most people just see the band, band, but it's not just the band which makes music. It's um, you have to take care about a lot of other stuff which makes a business. Right. That the band can exist, it, it's a business. It's and a, a lot it, of work. Yeah. It's a, oh, uh, oh yeah it's a well-oiled machine and that's why you guys have been together for so long i mean you have that you know that friendship and yeah. i think that you could you could see it you know at least me as a fan you can not only see it in the videos but you can see it in the music and hear it, how tight you guys are yeah I mean, that's great to hear i mean stefan me uh, we are brothers so <laughs> i don't have a choice and that's i mean right, that's right. also it's great to have a a uh, band together uh, with a brother, um, um, and uh, you know, you, uh, if you if you run a band that long time, you you are not you don't have just good times, uh, you know, you you have also uh, hard times, where a lot of bands broke up because ah, it's not it's not um, going that well anymore, you know, and and, and so they split up. So and we went over that uh, a lot of spots like that, you know, uh, where right. there could be reasons to split up, you know. And uh, yeah, it's it's. Um, I mean, you could be the best band in the world, the best musicians, if you don't have a good singer. Then you know, you you need you, if you have a shitty bass player, you can survive. Right. But uh, if you have a shitty singer, it doesn't work. So we, we met Andy. We we started a band. Um, my um, um, my older brother has had uh, schoolmates. Uh, um, they had had a band, and uh, the drummer was always stoned. So he he never showed up, or if he showed up, he was stoned and messed up. Right. And uh, and so say so Trump said at our house at a party from my older brother and said uh, hey can you come over and rehearse and that was my one chance you know sometimes you just have one chance in life that, right. my, my, that I was just playing drums for one year and I said wow I have a chance to get in a band because my best friend was playing guitar but it doesn't it doesn't work with him so I, right. I knew I have to find a band I said oh great and I went there with a bass player picked me up and I got the gig, and um, so um, we have had some singers that didn't work. And then we were the show, and Andy was singing in a in a German punk band <laughs> with German lyrics. Oh, really? That's, that's yeah, yeah. great. <laughs> that band was called Rock Zock, and they were, you know, German lyrics. And uh, we said, yeah, that thing, that singer, ah, good looking. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, maybe yeah, I ask, I ask him if I, um, he had no short hair at that time, and and he has, he has great long hair now. Right, but, right, uh, right. And that, that punk scene, uh, he, he never was a real punk, but that was his band. And um, we, we asked him after the show, do you come, want to come over? You know, uh, um, 
to try if you like that to play with us English lyrics and then came over and that, that, that's it that was, was it? Eight, and I think that was end of 83 and then oh. we changed the name uh, because I started with that other band 81 uh, and uh, we've had two years with different singers and tried some singers that never worked and then we came to the band 83 and then we were called Exodus and we right. find out oh, there's an, another band in the States which uses that name and we right. were so pissed right and uh we Rash. yeah the, yeah, yeah it was Kirk Hammett was on that band uh, uh at that time uh I heard about that I think last year no but that uh, right. we, we were that little little band no never played more than two shows you know but we wanted to fight for our name exodus you know right and they, did, <laughs> and they, they they were already famous you know we, we were thinking about uh, we lawyer up you know and uh, send him a uh, send them a letter so it's our name right right right, you know? right. and so Kirk Hammett is uh, he can be thankful that we didn't fight his name at that time <laughs> That's, that's, right. a story. that's a great story that's a, that's a story which uh, i mean kirk of course he never knew that that was a, 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 a story for us uh, because he don't care about little shitty band from kaisers <laughs> <laughs> but then we changed the name to a fund and plus and we like van halen we said oh let's try to sound like that and van halen is a dutch uh, um, name because okay. it's the same it's a town halen and if you it's it's a, a way uh, Dutch people came up with name. If you come from ha Harlem, you say I'm Van Harlem, and that's your family name. And Van right. den Plus is a kind of a, F a Flemish a Belgian name, which is very similar to uh, a Dutch, and it's, it, it means from the mud. And a Plus oh. is a little, uh, maybe a little lake or a muddy place. And Van den Plus means from from the muddy place. Oh, from the mud. Oh, that's interesting. That's and we didn't that's know great. that. We just no. it, it it was on the back of a Jaguar, the cars Jaguar. If you have in the eighties uh, uh, that tuned up Jaguar cars, not not tuned up outside, but inside leather right. seats and, and right. wooden interior. We saw that on the back of a of a Jaguar and said, "Fun plus sounds cool." And so we stole that name. That's cool. Yeah, that's a great. <laughs> that's a great and, story. And, and, and Jaguar never complained. You know like if that's our name you can't use it because it's a family name if you if you, it's it's like Müller or Schmidt a, a German name is fun plus a, a, a Belgian name or a Dutch name and so you uh, you right. can't steal a, a, a okay you're able to name. use it yeah. yeah that's that that's a great story yeah. that is a great story yeah long long way ago long time ago yeah, yeah. it's oh, I can imagine you know you listening to you for so long like i said since 99 and it was funny when i got far off grace this is how i heard you guys the first time was uh i was i was kind of starting to deal into uh you know selling the cds and things like that i was doing a memorabilia store and kind of working on that and i was dealing with a wholesaler that i had met and i was talking to him on the phone and he said look let me send you some cds that we have in stock you know, and, you know, see what you think. And I remember seeing that the first time, Phantom Plus, you know, it was far off Grace. And, you know, I opened up a list and I said, wow, man, these guys are, you know, I've been a fan ever since. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I listened to, you know, your, your, your drumming style. And what I wanted to ask you is, you know, being a progressive rock drummer, you know, you, you have so many influences and it's so... You know, so many, so vast as as far as, as what you play. Who are some of your influences, you know, being a progressive drummer, but also not only an influence, but who's somebody that would surprise us fans that, that you like and listen to? Uh, yeah, um, of, I started really coming into that music music thing that I said. Uh, at, at some age, you, you start an interest for music, you know. Right. And that's, uh, for me, it was like when I was 13 or 14, uh, that when Sex Pistols, uh, uh, the, the punk scene, I mean, that was over at that, at that time, it was over, but that came to Germany a little delayed. 
and I got that uh, this, uh, long player uh, Nevermind the Bollocks with my friends. We were listening to it uh, all day long, you know. Right. And I like that. I mean, I mean for me, uh, um, looking back, Bex Pistols, the band, was just a rock and roll band. If you if you listen to Steve Jones playing guitar, that was really rock and roll. Paul Cook, the drummer, straight right. ahead, you know, right. and Glenn Matlock on bass or Sid Vicious, which I think he couldn't really play bass, but that was a rock <laughs> band. But he looked great. He looked like you have had to look as a punk musician. Exactly. Sid Vicious was absolutely <laughs> top level um, but type. he was an addict yeah right. and uh, but they were just a rock and roll band uh, but, but what what made it punk was just uh, johnny rotten um and uh, that was my first step and then i went to van halen journey because i liked the way uh, I, I think the live album is called captured live i think right. and so so and steve smith was so great on drums and it was so perfect like i said i want to play like that guy I'm, I never went to that spot that I can, could play like him, but I want, you know, that was my, my dream, you know, right. and, and th so that were my main influences, uh, Alex Van Halen and uh, uh, Steve Smith at that time, and then Greg Bissonnette, which I really uh, like. Amazing. And so, and of course, if you are a drummer, you, um, you listen to Vinnie Cola, Utah, Dave Weckl, uh, and and Ringo, never forget Ringo. I mean, that's right. That's, that's right. I, I saw I saw uh, Beatles on on TV, and, and that was a time where you have really to sit on TV and look. You know, we we didn't have a video recorder, so it was like, hey, there, right. is, there, there, there is something on TV. Let's start TV. And the um, TV it took maybe two minutes if you that little spot from the middle become bigger and then you have right, to, right. And, and, that <laughs> and yeah and, and, and yeah. then you hear you you heard the moderator just say and that were the Beatles goodbye you know you missed it and you never could go back to some media take or whatever to have a look or, or to YouTube you have had to, right. to really study the plan for uh, there's something I saw the, the Beatles movie somewhere and I saw Ringo and I said oh I said that's cool I want to play the drums you know that's great and uh, yeah, that's my main influences. But, but what I still do, I, when I see on YouTube, sometimes you, you just go on YouTube and uh, you know, you, you, you see something and um, um, uh, you go to, um, to the next uh, um, uh, spot, you know, I see oh, Nicola Utah, and you go there and at, and at the end, uh, you find yourself um, uh, two hours, you know, uh, just jumping from from right. one uh, video to another that's right and try, and trying to find um, um, some new stuff where, where you can say oh, okay maybe i can use that in my own style um, and then adapt that and so um, I, I it's not like i do research but i if i once started to to and you uh, click one good video you jump from one to another spot you know Right. And um, that's, I think it never stops because if you, if you play an instrument, um, if you, if you, are in, in, uh, if you have a sport like soccer or football, I mean, with the 35, it's at least with 40, it's over, you know, because you, your muscles are not fast and strong enough to, to compete with the stars. You know? the other guys, so, yeah. So, yeah. So most people with, with sports, you have to, uh, end your career um, at least 40 I say maybe right. you can go golf whatever but uh, right. um, when you need to, when you have a spot where you may have to be fast and strong it's with 40 it's over but if you play an instrument and your your fingers work uh, your bones work it's lifetime it, no it's for lifetime and you can you can right. grow maybe you're not if, 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 if you are 65 maybe you're not as fast as you uh, played the drums when you were 40 but it's not just being fast it's uh, you grow also as a musician uh, um, That's right. not not just technically and so uh, it's I, I think if you start an instrument and you uh, each instrument and you you really uh, like it in a serious way it's for lifetime so if if, if student i I have a lot of students, you know, and uh, if they are kids, they they ask, 
or I see that question in their eyes, how long do I need uh, to, to get to a point where I don't have to practice anymore because I'm so good that I don't have to practice anymore. And I, I, say, I say, never. You, right. If you want to stop practicing, uh, practice, so, uh, you, you, it doesn't lead anywhere from that spot. You know, maybe you can um, stay at that level if right. you play a lot in a band, uh, so we have a lot of life experience. But if you, if you really love your instrument, you don't want to reach that spot where you can't explore any new thing because you want to explore new right. stuff. And so for me in, on Corona, where everything were, was really shut down, I started to play drums with brushes, you know, with the chest brushes. Uh, because, uh, you know, that was very interesting for me all the time, but it was totally uh, um, um, locked in for chess in my mind, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I saw something came, uh, a guy, uh, uh, Florian Alexandru Zorn, a German guy, he played uh, rock and uh, um, pop stuff with brushes. I said, I want to do that. So I, 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 I found a teacher, you know, and I took lessons, or still at, I still take lessons for playing brushes because my goal is uh, playing a uh, uh, brush, but uh, uh, um, drums with brushes, but uh, to rock and funk songs. You know, right. I don't want to play uh, just this, this, uh, jazz stuff. Right. And so that's totally different for uh, what I do with Fun Plus. Or, or, but but it's, it doesn't, um, I, I mean, it, it just helps. Oh, of course, I never, yeah, yeah, you grow and you, your, your mind um, expands. And um, it's, I, I think I never will play brushes for fun. Plus, maybe there's maybe there's a little spot where you can say, hey, let's have uh, four bars. I play brushes, maybe next CD, right. maybe, right. maybe, maybe but you know, it, it doesn't disturb. Uh, it doesn't disturb my drumming. Uh, if I am able to play drums with brushes, it just can make stuff better. So right. and, um, right. so it never stops. I think it and, and that's a that's a that's a great thing if you compare it to sports. It's a very very uh, a big uh, you know. Uh, I mean, I, I did sports when I was young too. But um, if you are a musician, there's in, and you stay in health, it's no um, there's no time limit for you. You know, you have to right. stop or just play on. That is, that's some great stories. Well, in in conclusion here, I mean, what's uh what's in store for Band and Plus for the rest of twenty twenty four? I know you guys have obviously new album April nineteenth, and uh, yeah. what 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 else do we have uh, to look forward to as fans? Uh, um, we have we have um, um, a, th a theater production uh, coming up in May and June, and um, we, so uh, Andy Stefan we were we were uh, discussion about. Um, discussing about tour plans, uh, but that depends on so many stuff. How, how is the reaction on the CD? No. Right. If, if the, when the CD comes out, uh, you have that reviews and the people which hopefully buy it and like it, and uh, um, that makes touring much easier. Right. And uh, um, a lot, lot of venues, they have a big uh, venue and a small venue, and uh, um, that's a decision how many people will show up. And uh, uh, and you have, uh, if you want to um, come up with a tour now, you have it's impossible to tour in twenty four autumn because it's it's just six months, and all the right. good dates are gone. They are the, the good dates are uh, um, uh, occupied. Right. Uh, but Festivals so, and everything. And yeah. So, so we we uh, we said, okay, let's let's move to twenty five, because then we have really time to to um, to um, organize that, and we know what's coming up. Is a new CD uh, very well? Uh, the the people like it very well. Makes it much easier for us to to uh, work with the agency to you know to um, talk to the promoters you know it's much right. easier and so it, it really makes sense to wait what happens in uh, three weeks right. when the CD comes up and then right. then we will start to organize a, um, 
live shows. Um, what the plan is now to play uh, a block in um, spring 25 and then play a block in uh, autumn 25. That's great. That's great. That's at least that's a plan. <laughs> oh, I can't I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it, seeing the reaction that the yeah. fans give you for this album. And and in closing, Andreas, I want to just say thank you so much for doing yeah. what you do. You know, you guys, you know, and, and the music that you put out. Like I said, I've been listening for so long, and it's a it's a life experience. It's you know it ties into all those moments and uh, you know memories and everything. And what you do, just thank you for 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 doing that. You know, because it's it's a it, it's such a blessing to have you know this yeah. type of music. And you know, I wish you guys the best on this album. I really do. Thank, thank you a lot. Thanks a lot. And it's also a blessing for us to uh, to be able to. Uh, make that you know it's not just it's, it's not kind of a word when you say it's my work of course it's it's your work but i for me it's uh or also for the other guys in the band it's a it's great to be able to to um to um, live that life you choose because you some at some point you um you have your um study whatever you did of, uh, and uh, you choose that way, you know, that, okay, let's try it as a musician. And it worked out because we never just went on that one path, you know, we said, okay, let's, uh, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar was our first uh, theater yeah. production. And we said, hey, that's great, that worked. And it doesn't disturb our heavy stuff in the band, it, it helps. And and uh, so we did um, um, different stuff too. Or Stefan and me, we have uh, music school, you know, because you also have time to teach students and, and it works. And so it's, I, I wake up every day and I think that's so great that I, I'm able to, to live that dream, you know. Uh, and so um, because um, there are a lot of people which didn't have had that luck, you know, right. they are great musicians. But they never have had that one chance to go in that band that doesn't help. You are the best drummer in the world, but you don't have a band. Or, or right. meeting meeting Andy, you know, if you, if you don't meet at that one time that singer which can bring your band forward, then you're just a band without that's a singer. Right. And so, right. so that that's I'm so glad for uh, uh, for for that um, possibilities. Well, that's it. You know, it's it's great. I'm glad you guys continue to do it. And, uh, you know, best of luck, Andreas, really, with this new album. You know, I'm looking forward to, like I said, seeing the reaction. And uh, I'm hoping to see you guys in the U.S. again at some point. I hope so, too. I hope so, too. Yeah, I, I, I think the best uh, possibility is always uh, Proc Power uh, yeah. um, in Atlanta. But every every band which ha which plays that kind of music wants music wants to play there, and uh, they have a, I think they have a lot of bands which want to play there. And oh, I hope maybe sometimes they uh, give us a call. They need to give you a call because you guys are one of the best. Believe me. I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andreas, have a good day, and uh, and thank you for joining the show. And I'd love to have you on again at some point. Mm -hmm. I said I would love to have you on again at some point on the yeah. show and whatever you guys yeah. are doing, you know, whatever you're doing. You got my support forever though, man. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Have a good day. Okay. You, you, you too. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.